Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Why I Want is coming to an end, because this is the last Saturday before the NHL draft. The series is not going to end. We're going to do this again next year. But for 2023, this is it. For some reason, they decided to make the NHL draft in June instead of July, which is kind of bad for me because ad rates are actually a bit better as the year goes on, but at the same time, I have no control over it. The NHL is going to do what the NHL is going to do, and in the final episode of 2023's Why I Want, we're going over a guy whose numbers, whose production was so gosh darn good that he beat Austin Matthews' point record. He beat Jack Hughes' assist record. And he is a guy going out there with arguably the most interesting profile in terms of the projection versus the numbers itself. Let's head over to the US NTDP and talk about the final one of these top forwards that's going to hear their name drafted in the first round of the 2023 draft. We already talked about keep my wife's name out your effing mouth, Will Smith. We already talked about the goal scorer, Ryan Leonard. We had talked about the workhorse, Oliver Moore. Now we are finalizing things out with the guy that outscored them all. A player who literally holds the NTTP record for most points in a season. Today we are talking about Gabe Perot, a 5'11", 165-pound left-handed right-wing player out of Sherbrooke, Quebec, Canada. Now, if the name sounds familiar, it's because his older brother, Jakob Perot, is a prospect of the Anaheim Ducks. He was a top-round talent back in 2020, and his younger brother, Gabe Perot, had himself a season for the ages. Now, before we go out there and look at the consolidated ranking and everything, I wanted to just focus on the points, because this is really what stands out the most when you look at Perot in his profile. This season, the guy played 63 games with the US NTDP, and in this sample... He had 53 goals, 79 assists, and 132 total points. That right there is spectacular. He was over two points a game as a junior player in the NTDP, and as we had said off the hop, this is the most productive season any player has had at the NTDP level ever. His 132 points beats out teammate Will Smith, who had 127 points, so there you go, one and two in the all-time record books. It beats out Austin Matthews, who in 2014-15 had 117 points. It beats out Jack Hughes, who scored in his 17-year-old year 112 points. It beats out Clayton Keller. It's a really, really good number. And if you go over to assists, you could see that Gabe Perot had the most assists in NTDP history, beating out Jack Hughes' draft-eligible season. And so, even though this guy had the best NTDP season ever, even though he outproduced Austin Matthews, he outassisted Jack Hughes, why is it that his consolidated ranking is only 14th overall? You have some outlets like Daily Faceoff. They have him at number 17. McKean's has him at number 21. So does Recruit Scouting. Dauber has him at 24. Smot Scouting, 27. What's going on here? Now, before we dive a little bit deeper, I wanted to just say this regarding the numbers, because Austin Matthews did have himself a 17-year-old year that was his draft minus one season. Because Matthews had a late birthday as a prospect, he actually wasn't able to play with the NTDP as a draft-eligible player because he would have been too old for the program. So he went over to Switzerland, it's why he was drafted out of Switzerland, and it's why the record, which was the NTDP record this entire time, was given to Matthews as a draft minus one player. It's because the birth date is a little bit earlier there. So, all numbers aside, let's head over to the Elite Prospect Scouting Report to read what they have to say about Perot. He's got great hands and sees the ice exceptionally well. The puck is on his stick for a stride or two, just long enough to draw a four-checker, and then it's on the tape of a teammate in motion with space. Perot is a deceptive, adaptable, pacey playmaker who always makes the right choice with the puck. He can sequence plays, put pucks into space, and problem-solve against numbers with relative ease. And that scouting report, I'm going to say it's very accurate. Because when you talk about Gabe Perot, the biggest part of his game that stands out is his extreme hockey smarts and his ability to playmake on the rush. He was over an assist a game with the NTDP this season for a reason. He was almost at two assists per game at the U18s. He had 18 points in seven games over there. But the reason Gabe Perot is not seen with the same light as Austin Matthews or Jack Hughes was is firstly his mobility. His skating is not as 
well-refined, polished up, and NHL projectable, as some of these other top NTDB guys were, but... The very interesting part about Gabe Perot's game is that he did play on a line with Ryan Leonard and Will Smith, two guys that really do excel when they hold onto the puck. Will Smith is a playmaker who is an absolute magician wizard with the puck on his stick. He can dangle by guys, he can set up plays, he can create crafty pathways for his teammates to exploit. Ryan Leonard is a power forward. He can come in with the puck, hold on to it, protect it, force his way to the front of the goal, and snipe it by. Gabe Perot is a player who, when you watch his tape, Gabe Perot is at his most effective when the puck is off of his stick. The thing that defines Gabe Perot's game in the eyes of many scouts is his ability to create plays by receiving the puck and for a split second holding onto it before throwing it back the other way, across the grain, into open space for a teammate to have a tap in. Yes, he's shifty, he's nifty, he's really deceptive, and he's a smart passer. He can finagle his way to the front of the goal with nifty dangles and slipperiness, but the way he plays isn't necessarily the way to drive a line. He can be the ultimate passenger, and that's what happens when you play with very good puck-facilitating, play-driving players like Will Smith and Ryan Leonard, who have incredible playmaking and great shooting. For Gabe Perot, though, he plays almost like the ultimate primary assist guy, with how he's able to loosely throw pucks to open space where no opponents are, leaving his teammates with easy tap-in goals. He's very smart, but he isn't a lock to be able to drive a line himself. His best plays are when the puck is on a stick for a short while, with give-and-goes and quick shots. His skating and mobility has been determined as a weak spot, too. So, when it comes to Gabe Perot, this is a really unique case where, and if you watch the tape, you could see that even though this guy might have the most points at the end of the day, he is not the most effective player. Will Smith is a more dangerous player with the puck in his stick. Ryan Leonard can do more things with the puck. Gabe Perot is a very good passenger when he receives the puck in the slot and he throws it back across for the other guy, but that's how he gets most of his points. Not because he's the guy who carries it in himself, deceives and dangles right by four guys before putting the puck in top shelf past the goalie. That's a Connor Bedard type move. That's not a Gabe Perot type move. His mobility doesn't allow him to do that, and it's going to be a focus point on his development heading into the next few years. He's committed to Boston College for next season, so we'll see what he does in the NCAA. But for now, Gabe Perot is one of these guys who projects as an extraordinarily talented complementary playmaker, and whose ceiling has been compared to that of Clayton Keller if everything works out. If everything doesn't work out, though, a more realistic projection for Gabe Perot is probably a second-line playmaker who can get maybe 40 to 50 assists per season and chip in maybe 15 to 20 goals a season, if everything works out okay. That's not his ceiling, but it's probably what he's more likely to achieve if he's not able to fully capitalize on developing that mobility and improving his play-driving qualities. Playing with Will Smith and Ryan Leonard helped him out tremendously, and it sort of hindered his draft stock in the process. Is this guy able to carry a line? We don't necessarily know that. Can he make really good plays when he's playing with top-tier playmakers who can feed him the puck or get pucks on goal? Yeah, he can be a really good complementary piece, because he doesn't hold on to the puck too often. He creates really good plays with his smarts and his quick one-time passing, but is that enough to translate into top-tier production at the NHL level? Jack Hughes and Austin Matthews, these guys know how to control a shift. Austin Matthews can score you 60 goals. Jack Hughes can beat out both his team and the opposition's team in one skate. Gabe Perot does not have that same individual status of talent, and so it's why he's not projected to being first overall like the other guys he had just beaten in terms of point production. So at the end of the day, this is a player that has a really unique profile, but he's not going to be one of the top dogs. If he goes somewhere in the top 10, what a team is really looking for is for him to expand on that playmaking and the smarts that he has, the awareness of the game around him, to be able to play the puck around opponents and do so in such a quick amount of time. If he goes outside the top 10, then a team really has an opportunity of getting a golden playmaker as long as they develop him properly. But that's going to come in time. We'll see where he goes from here. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Gabe Perot and what he is as a prospect. Do you like the profile here? Do you think he's got it in him to improve his mobility? And do you think he was the ultimate passenger with the NTTP? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And... 
Bye.